Good morning. Uh, we, have general, we have a point of order. On a point of order, Presiding Officer, I understand that the Scottish Government has received, or indeed will shortly receive, reports from each of the 14 Territorial Health Board's internal investigations into the hidden waiting time scandal. The intention of the Scottish Government, I believe, is to publish these reports on the 19th of December, which is immediately before this Parliament rises for the Christmas recess. I'm sure it's not the case that there is any attempt by the Government to avoid scrutiny. So on that basis, Presiding Officer, given the seriousness of the situation and reports of the scandal spreading beyond NHS Lothian to a number of other health boards, including NHS Tayside and NHS Greater Glasgow and Clyde, I believe it is essential that this Chamber has the opportunity to question Ministers on these findings before the parliamentary recess. Could you perhaps advise whether it would be possible for the Bureau to consider allowing for a ministerial statement on Thursday next week to enable the Parliament to properly scrutinise the matter? I thank the Member for prior notification that she was going to raise this matter. However, as the Member knows, as a former business manager herself, this is not a point of order. It is, of course, a matter for, as she quite rightly says, the Business Bureau to determine the business. May I suggest that she raise the issue with her own business manager, who may wish to bring this to the attention of the Business Bureau next Tuesday, so that a discussion and decision can be made. We now move to general questions. Question number one, Margaret Mitchell. Presiding officer, to ask the Scottish Government what information it has on any increase in calls and approaches to organisations that support survivors of childhood sexual abuse following the recent revelations about Jimmy Savile. Minister Aileen Campbell. The Scottish Government is aware that organisations like Children First are receiving increased approaches to their parent line service following the recent high profile child abuse investigations. The Scottish Government does not tolerate any form of child abuse. The well-being and safety of children and young people in Scotland is a key priority for the Scottish Government. All children and young people have the right to be cared for and protected from harm and to grow up in a safe environment where their rights and needs are respected. Over the past decade, the culture, legislation and policy around child protection has changed considerably. A greater level of awareness and vigilance operates across all public services today. We have stronger arrangements for preventing children being exposed to individuals who can perpetrate these offences, and we have introduced measures to improve standards and ensure practitioners have the necessary skills and knowledge to protect children from neglect and abuse. So I would encourage anyone who is looking for support to visit the Survivor Scotland website, which provides details of a range of support services. Margaret Mitchell. I thank the Minister for that very comprehensive answer. Uh, currently, there are a small number of agencies across Scotland who run successful advice helplines for survivors. In view of the increase in approaches that organisation, these organisations who work with the victims of sexual abuse, such as Open Secret and Falkirk, have recorded since the Savile revelations, will the Minister consider carrying out a scoping exercise to see if there is a need for a national Scottish help? Helpline for survivors. Minister? Uh, I thank Margaret Mitchell for, for reason. I understand that she has a, a particular interest in this, given that she's and done a lot of work on this area, given her position as convener of the Cross Party Group for Adult Survivors of Childhood uh, Abuse, and happily always to engage with her on this particular matter. I do know that since 2007, we have allocated £5.1 million through the Survivor Scotland strategy to fund a range of support services for survivors and we successfully piloted a forum to give adult survivors an opportunity to talk about their experiences of residential care and are now working to set up a national confidential forum. And we've established the In Care Survivor Service Scotland to support adults who suffered childhood abuse in care. And further to that, relating to my particular brief as well, we have a range of measures in place in order to ensure that children are less exposed to uh, incidences of harm and people who can per perpetrate uh, harm uh, and abuse uh, towards children. But we also always remain vigilant and that's why always engaging with other uh, stakeholders within the police with um, uh, national organisations as well we must make sure that we're constantly vigilant on this issue because it's not an issue we can become complacent over and we may always ensure that we work together to ensure that children are protected and, sell and safe but also that there's a safe environment for people who've expo uh, experienced uh, historic abuse that they have a safe place in which they can disclose uh, those uh, experiences and get the help and support that they need. Question number two, Chick Brodie. 
to ask the Scottish Government what communication it has had from the UK Government regarding European funding available to small and medium-sized enterprises. Minister Fergus Ewing. Uh, also, the Scottish Government has regular discussions with the UK Government on a number of issues, including the European funding available to small and medium-sized enterprises. Chick Brody. Uh, I thank the Minister for his answer. After a meeting with the Directorate in Brussels last week, it transpires that the SME G, the SMEG Loan and Guarantee Finance Programme for SMEs, is one of two funds which have 1.2 billion euros available to support or guarantee financial assistance for said businesses through intermediaries. As the programme is due to be refreshed next year, can the Minister confirm that the Scottish Government will establish direct communication with Europe in order to ensure that Scottish SMEs can be aware of and benefit from this fund in future? Minister? I, I, yes, I, I can confirm that, that we have all appropriate representations, both with the UK Government generally and also generally with the EU, in ways in which we can help uh, uh, Scottish companies access such finance. I'm delighted to say that under the Enterprise Finance Guarantee Scheme, to date there have been 1,164 offers to Scottish companies involving £162.78 million. Pounds. And I can also say that many Scottish companies, including the prosthetics company Touch Bionics and the wave energy company Albertern, have benefited uh, from EFG assistance. We will carry on uh, working very hard to ensure that all Scottish companies receive the best financial help on the best terms that are available. Jamie McGregor. Uh, thank you. Um, what funds are available for SMEs in relation to the commercialisation of academic and scientific research in Scotland? I'm not sure that's entirely relevant. Uh, question number three, John Wilson. Presiding officer, to ask the Scottish Government what plans it has in place to ensure equality of treatment and diversity with regards to public appointments that it makes. Cabinet Secretary John Swinney. Presiding officer, the Scottish Government is committed to encouraging a diverse range of individuals to apply for regulated ministerial appointments to public bodies and to ensuring that all who do apply are treated fairly and equally throughout the appointment process. John Wilson. I thank the Cabinet Secretary for his response. What reassurance can he give me that other than the surveys which take place in regard to candidates who have failed to be appointed, what measures does the Government intend to take to ensure that diversity takes place within the public appointment process? Cabinet Secretary. President Officer, the, the Government, as Mr Wilson correctly says, uh, reports on these issues, but we also have a series of initiatives to encourage people to try to, uh, to apply for public appointments. Um, there is an outreach programme that is currently uh, being prepared to take this forward. Um, there have also been uh, a number of specific actions taken. Um, uh, recently, our team were represented at the launch of the Scottish Asian Women's Network to encourage public appointments from that group of the population. There was also a stand at the Scottish Workplace Network event for LGBT staff. Um, and uh, there are there's close collect connections between the public appointments team and the Scottish Government's Equality Unit to ensure that the specific Scottish duties of the Equality Act 2010 are taken forward in relation to public appointments. Question number four, Duncan McNeill. To ask the Scottish Government when the Cabinet Secretary for Health and Wellbeing last met the Healthcare Improvement Scotland and what was discussed. Minister Michael Matheson. Uh, the Cabinet Secretary met with representatives from Healthcare Improvement Scotland when he conducted the Healthcare Improvement Scotland annual review on the 9th of October 2012. Dr. McNeill. I thank the Minister for his reply um, and uh, draw his attention to the Health Improvement Service recently published thematic report as part of the inspections into the care for older people in acute hospitals. And while there is no doubt some positives in those reports, I am sure that he will uh, be as concerned and disappointed that I, as I am that six out of eight hospitals failed to screen patients for dementia, seven out of eight failed to put care plans in place, four out of four hospitals inspected failed to screen patients for nutrition and hydration, and three out of four hospitals inspected did not provide patients with the appropriate utensils with, for eating and drinking. Um, I am sure that uh, he would be concerned, the Minister would be concerned about this, and could he tell us what he and his officials are doing to ensure that the action to address these issues across all hospital boards in Scotland has been taken? Minister. 
Uh, can I thank the member for his uh, question? And you'll be aware that the purpose behind these thematic inspections is to identify areas where there is inadequate practice to make sure that health boards and hospitals are taking action to address these matters, but at the same time to also illustrate areas of good practice that's been undertaken. And he'll also recognise, in the particular reports he made reference to, that in a number of those reports that highlighted good practice that was also taking place within our NHS facilities, where staff are showing compassion and often dignity to patients in the way in which they provide them and support their care while in the hospital. What's extremely important now is that once these inspection reports have been completed, is that our boards then actually undertake the necessary action in order to address these issues of concern so that they can then address these issues to ensure that patients receive the appropriate care which they require. Malcolm Chisholm. Why has the report into the acute care of older people at Nine Miles Hospital never been published? Why have more recent uh, planned inspections been cancelled? And is the Scottish Government having second thoughts about a robust system of rigorous inspection and public reporting? Michael Matheson. No, there is uh, no second thoughts whatsoever. I understand that the inspection report, the draft report for uh, Nine Wells, went through a quality assurance process that was undertaken by Healthcare Improvement Scotland, which raised a number of issues around the content of the report itself. And they're presently working through these issues. And of course, Healthcare Improvement Scotland will look to publish reports as and when they see uh, appropriate. What I can also say to the member is that some of the uh, scheduled inspections have been uh, reorganised in order to assist boards with the uh, pressures they're presently experiencing during the winter months. Uh, but the inspection programme will continue into the new year and will continue thereafter. Question number five has been withdrawn by Richard Lyle. He has provided an explanation that I am not satisfied with. Uh, it is a matter that I have discussed with all of the business managers and I hope that members will take note for the future. Question number six, Gavin Brown. Thank you, Presiding Officer. To ask the Scottish Government when it will next meet Scottish Enterprise. Cabinet Secretary, John Swinney. Uh, I last met with Scottish Enterprise at a meeting of the National Economic Forum, which took place yesterday. Scottish Government officials meet with their counterparts in Scottish Enterprise regularly on a range of subjects. Gavin Brown. Uh, thank you. Uh, last year, Scottish Government said that the enterprise agencies would switch over £200 million in two years from revenue to capital. It now turns out that it will only be £100 million. What is the economic rationale for the enterprise agencies switching less than 50 per cent of the initial plan? Cabinet Secretary. Um, I think what um, Mr Brown's question um, does not take into account is that the Government um, has uh, taken an approach which is designed to address some of the loss of capital resources that have uh, affected us as a consequence of decisions of the United Kingdom Government. Uh, we have put in place steps to shift resources from uh, resource budgets into capital. Um, across the Government, we are sustaining that activity to guarantee that we um, are able to fulfil that commitment. And what I would hope Mr Brown can understand is there must be sufficient flexibility in budget management to identify where that can be undertaken across the government to ensure that our commitment at strategic level to, improve, to increase the amount of resources we are able to shift from resource into capital is fulfilled to contribute to meet the losses that we have suffered as a consequence of cuts from the United Kingdom government. Question number seven, Graham Pearson. Thank you, Presiding Officer. To ask the Scottish Government what action is being taken to replace substandard road markings on A75, A76 trunk roads. Minister Keith Brown. Uh, Amy, the trunk road operating company, is responsible for the A75 and the A76, and they carry regular inspections to ensure road markings remain in good order in accordance with their contract. Amy maintain and renew road markings and reflect the studs routinely on the A75 and A76, and during this financial year, approximately £150,000 has been spent and further works are expected. Next year, we plan an anticipated spend of £250,000. This year, we are investing £3.75 million in road lining across Scotland, including an additional £1 million from our strategic road safety budget, specifically to tackle the condition of our white road lines. Graham Pearson. Uh, I thank the Minister for that reply. He may be aware of specific concerns raised by the RSMA study about the condition of the road markings on these roads and other roads in the area. I am sure that his commitment to road safety is well recorded. 
I hope that he will further press the organisation to ensure that these markings are brought up to date as soon as possible. Minister? Hey, can I say that I do, I do have that uh, commitment that the member mentions to road safety and it is worth pointing out that the other things that we also do in terms of road safety have led to the situation where we have the lowest uh, ever recorded uh, levels of casualties and uh, particularly fatalities on our roads. But it is an important point. If the member is aware of a specific uh, instance, then by all means please get in touch and I'll get in touch with the Performance Action Group who independently assess what the Trunk Road Operating Company are doing and take further action on it. But I'm happy to give the assurance that more money has been spent in this area. Question number eight, Stuart Stevenson. To ask the Scottish Government what impact the Chancellor's uh, autumn statement will have on the Scottish budget. Cabinet Secretary, John Swinney. Uh, the Scottish Government will receive £394 million in capital consequentials between 2012-13 and 2014-15 as a result of the autumn statement. However, this will be partially offset by a reduction in resource deal of £63.5 million. The Scottish Government has been calling on the Chancellor to boost capital spending for a number of years. The consequentials announced in the autumn statement are therefore welcome. However, it is important to note that even with this additional funding, our capital budget still faces a 26% real terms cut. Stuart Stevenson. Uh, is the Cabinet Secretary aware that the autumn statement shows that over the next five years the UK Government plans to increase tax take by reducing tax avoidance to the sum of about £270 million a year? If Scotland had full control over the taxation system, how would that help us uh, in managing our Scottish budget? Cabinet Secretary. I think fundamentally the, uh, any tax system has got to deal effectively and comprehensively with any dangers of tax avoidance. Um, that would uh, without doubt be a core uh, requirement of the taxation system of an independent Scotland, but indeed it is a core element of the consultation document that I published earlier this week on the issues around tax management in relation to the increased responsibilities that will come to the Parliament in connection with tax um, issues uh, in relation to stamp duty land tax, uh, landfill tax and the Scottish rate of income tax in from 2015 onwards. Um, at the core of that uh, proposal um, is a very rigorous regime in tackling tax avoidance and that will be at the heart of the measures we take forward. Question number nine, Stuart Maxwell. Uh, to ask the Scottish Government what its position is on Scotland Excel's consultation on a proposed national framework for residential children's care services. Minister Aileen Campbell. This consultation is being led by Scotland Excel in partnership with Scottish local authorities and follows lengthy engagement with providers and local authorities. The Scottish Government sees this framework as a necessary first step towards the implementation of strategic commissioning of residential childcare services at a national level. Stuart Maxwell. Thank you, President Officer. The Minister may be aware that service providers in the childcare sector have raised concerns about Scotland Excel's proposals. It has been suggested by some that the consultation itself is flawed and that the process has excluded key stakeholders, with fears that it may result in fragmented services which are not driven by outcomes or partnership focused. What steps can the Minister take to address these concerns and what assurances can she offer that the interests of Scotland's vulnerable children and young people will continue to be put first? Minister. Uh, thank you. Uh, I thank Stuart Maxwell for his, uh, uh, his, and his question. I am aware of the concerns that are raised by a small number of independent residential care providers about the consultation process, but it is important to note that involvement of the providers and other stakeholders has been an essential element throughout this process. And I know that officials have agreed to meet with the small group of providers who have voiced concerns on Monday the 17th. I will listen to what they have to say. Absolutely correct and the right thing to do during a consultation process. But Stuart Maxwell is absolutely right that we need to make sure that the systems we have in place are, about, are protecting uh, the, some of the most vulnerable children that we have in society. Uh, and I know that Stuart Maxwell shares my passion to do better by this group of looked after children, as is our responsibility as parents. Uh, this is about improving the system, about bringing consistency, transparency and having in place something which has children and young people at its heart. We now move to first